Hello, Grade 7 learners! It's a new day of fun and exciting learning. This is Sir John Reed, and I'll make sure that learning English will be so much fun! If you're looking for learning fun, English is so much fun. Say together, yes we can! English is so much fun, don't you fret, you'll get it done, just don't forget, that English is so much fun! Summarizing teaches you how to discern the most important ideas in a text, how to ignore irrelevant information, and how to integrate the central ideas in a meaningful way. It improves your retention of the information that you've read. Also, summarization strategies can be used in almost every content area. Summarization helps you to determine essential ideas and consolidate important details that support them. It also enables you to focus on the key words and phrases in a text that are worth noting and remembering. Thus, it teaches you how to take a large selection of text and reduce it to its main points to get a better understanding of the text. To start off our discussion, let's define what a summary is. A summary is a shortened version of a text that highlights its key points. Now, let us go through each of the important steps in putting together a summary. Let's recall the words we came across in the picture riddle activity. Reading, important, an idea. Keep in mind that to summarize is to retell a story in your own words. The first step in summarizing is to read the material and to identify the main ideas or the important details. It is really important to keep reading the text until you understand it fully. And as you read it, Identify the important points of the writer or author. Write them down using a list, topic web, or column notes. The second step is to begin writing your summary. Use an introductory statement to open the summarization. Point out the main idea of the author and the point of the text as you see it by highlighting the who, what, when, where, why, and how details stated in the text. The third step is to organize your ideas taken from the text. Combine the ideas into one or more paragraphs. Use transition words to connect the sentences and the paragraphs. And finally, the fourth step is to proofread the summary for punctuation, spelling, sentence structure, and content. Just use a few words to tell us the key ideas in the story. Summaries should be written in the third person as it should focus solely on the content of what you have read and not on your opinion or thoughts about the content. Remember, when you present a summary, you want your reader to be confident that you are communicating only what the writer said and not what you want to say about it. Let's review the steps. 1. Read the material and identify the main ideas or the important details. 2. Begin writing your summary by opening with an introductory statement and supporting it with the important who, what, when, where, why, and how details in the text. Number 3. Organize your ideas taken from the text. And proofread the summary for punctuation, spelling, sentence structure, and content. To help us construct our summary better, we can use organizers. These are great tools we can use to organize information for our summaries. Here are the organizers that we can use to aid us in writing summaries. First, we have the Big Five Organizer. The Big Five Organizer consists of someone who is the character, wants, 
what does the character want? But, what is the main problem? So, how does the character solve the problem? And then, what is the solution to the problem? Summary serves as the combination of all the points gathered. Another organizer is the main idea and sub-ideas organizer. This organizer enables you to highlight the main idea and the detailed information to support the main idea. Lastly, we have the story map. A story map allows a reader to identify specific details in a story like the characters and the setting. It is also useful in making your summary short as it organizes important points for the beginning, middle, and end. Oh, there's the gate to our destination where another challenge awaits us. This is the perfect opportunity to practice your summarization skills using the strategies that you have learned to open the gate. Come on! Oh, here is a selection that we can work on. It looks like a story. I think that we can make use of the story map to help us in summarizing this selection. We need to accomplish this task to open the first lock. Take note of the characters, the setting, which is the time and place, and the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story. Let us see what text we need to summarize. Oh, it's the legend of the hundred islands of Alameda City, Pangasinan. This is a beautiful place and a story too, I tell you. Come and join me in reading this. The Legend of the Hundred Islands of Alamino City, Pangasinan Centuries ago, before the coming of the Spaniards to the Philippines, there was a brave Raja who ruled over the people of Alaminos, Raja Masibag. He had several hundred warriors to guard his kingdom, led by his son, Datu Mabiskeg. The little kingdom enjoyed peace and prosperity, unmolested by its neighbors. But one day, a report came that an invading force was coming from across the sea. The Raja called a council of war among his chieftains. It was decided to meet the enemy at sea. They must not be allowed to land. One hundred of the bravest warriors were summoned. They were placed in ten large bankas, armed to the teeth. Datu Mabiskeg, in the lead banka, commanded the task force. The two forces were soon locked in mortal combat. Furious hand-to-hand -hand fighting broke out on the boats and raged until the sun sank in the west and darkness covered the sea. When morning came, none of the warriors returned alive. The enemy was nowhere to be seen. They had been annihilated, and so were the 100 warriors led by the intrepid son. While the kingdom celebrated victory, the old Raha mourned for his son. A week later, when the townspeople woke up in the morning and looked toward the sea, a wonderful sight met their eyes. Where before has been an empty expanse of water as far as the eye could see, now there were many tiny islands dotting the sea line. There were about a hundred of these islets. Some were shaped like overturned bunkas. Others looked like bodies of dead men floating in the sea. The people of Alaminos believed that these were the 100 warriors who had given up their lives in defense of their homes. The gods had immortalized them in the form of islands so that they might watch over their native land forever. Now, let us use the story map to summarize the text. Here are the possible answers. The characters in the text are Raha Masibeg and Datu Mabiskeg. For the setting, the place is Alamino City, Pangasinan, and the time is centuries ago. Here are the possible contents of your beginning, middle, and end. Beginning There was a peaceful and prosperous city ruled by Raha Masibeg and Datu Mabiskeg. 
The news of invasion came one day, alarming the leaders and townspeople. Middle War happened between the army of Raha Masibag and the army of invaders. None of the warriors led by Datu Mabiskeg returned alive. End The townspeople of Alaminos believed that the islands shaped like men and overturned bankas were the fallen heroes of their beloved city and that the gods had immortalized them in the form of islands so that they might watch over their native land forever. Well done, Grade 7! You're a winner! You did well, class! I am sure you had fun summarizing the story. And look! We have reached the city of summary! Remember, my grade 7 learners, that when you make or present a summary, you want your reader to be confident that you are communicating only what the writer said, not your own ideas about it. Summarizing teaches us how to determine the most important ideas in a text, how to ignore irrelevant information, and how to integrate the central ideas in a meaningful way. Summarizing improves the retention of the information that you read in all kinds of texts. Alright, I hope you learned a lot today. In the next episode, we'll travel from the city of summary to the city of crazy. More learning awaits us in another fun adventure. This has been Sir John Ray. I can't wait to see you again because English is so much fun when learning happens with you. Bye!